Good evening again, everyone, and thank you all so much for being here. My name is Jen Seeley, and I'm the coordinator of admissions, recruitment, and outreach at Frederick Community College. Tonight, you're going to get an overview of FCC, and we'll go into depth on the enrollment steps and how to start. And you'll learn about support services available to all of our students. You'll also hear from two of our current students who are student ambassadors and work for the admissions office, and they're going to talk a little bit about their experience at FCC. And then we'll conclude tonight's event with a presentation from Shelby Metzger, who's Assistant Director of Financial Aid. Feel free to please use the chat throughout the event. We have admission staff member present who will be able to answer your questions. And we'll also be providing different links and information that we go over in the presentation in the chat as well for you to be able to access and click on right away. So now I'd like to ask if our two students, Joe and Kira, could come on camera and I'm gonna have them introduce themselves. And remember to be thinking of some questions that you might wanna ask a current student. And when it comes to the student panel portion at the end of the presentation or at the end of the program, we can ask them those questions. So um, Joe, do you wanna start out and introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Joe. I'm a freshman here at FCC, first semester. And I graduated from Catoctin last spring. And my major is music. And I like play Barry Sax, as, that's my main instrument. And I'm a part of the ambassador program and I'm in the jazz ensemble here. Thanks, Joe. Hi, Kara, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, my name is Kira. This is my first year at FCC. I'm majoring in just general studies. I graduated from Frederick High School and my graduation year is 2023. I'm doing the ambassador program with admissions and I really enjoy going to FCC. Great, thank you guys so much for being here. Again, we're going to hear them um, from them at the end of the program to talk all things FCC from the student lens. So I'm going to kick things off here and actually share my screen to show you um, a presentation. Okay, so at FCC, we serve just under 9,000 credit students and about 7,000 continuing education and workforce development students. From those numbers, about 70% of our students are part-time and 30% attend FCC as full-time students. You'll find small class sizes at FCC with a 15 to 1 student to faculty ratio and 50%, 58% of FCPS graduates attend FCC. So it's nice that you'll have classes with friends and see familiar faces around campus. Now talking about our academic flexibility, there's something for everyone at FCC, whether you're a high school student taking a dual enrollment class at your high school or through FCC open campus or you're an adult student taking a class for personal enrichment. Um, we also have the option for students to be visiting students and you can attend FCC. Um, your, you can attend FCC over the summer terms or winter terms if you attend a four-year school and you can take a class or two at FCC and then have those transferred to your four-year institution, which saves you both time and money. Depending on what your academic and career goals are will depend what path is best for you. We offer short-term training programs or continuing education programs. So these are non-credit programs. Students who pursue these want to start working and get into a career or an industry right away. So they usually last six months to a year at full-time status. So again, those are non-credit. Those programs won't transfer to a four-year school. Then we offer academic certificates which are about 30 credits or one year as a full-time student, and then associate degrees, which are 60 credits, or it will be the length of two years for full-time students. And both certificates and associate degrees, those credits will transfer to four-year schools. Um, FCC allows our students to be successful with their school life balance. We understand that students have jobs, family obligations, or other responsibilities. So you can attend FCC as a full-time or part-time status and classes are offered in different formats that fit your needs. So you can either take classes in person on campus or through a hybrid model, which is on per in person and online, 
or strictly online classes. Classes are offer, also offered all throughout the day in the morning, in the afternoons, in the evening, and you can even take a Saturday class if that's better for your schedule. Um, right now, registration is still open for the current semester, fall 2021. There's one more late start session that begins on November 3rd, and you have to, the last day to enroll for those classes are November 4th. On our website, we have a real-time credit schedule that you're able to search for classes by the class formats too, which makes it nice. And registration for spring 2022, when classes start in January, will open on Monday, November 1st. So this coming Monday, you're gonna be able to start registering for spring classes. FCC offers over 85 different academic programs. Some of our most popular programs include our healthcare majors like nursing, um, business administration, any of our STEM degrees like cybersecurity, and general studies is also popular for students who may not be sure what they ultimately want to major in yet. Um, you have the ability to complete your gen eds and take some elective courses in other classes so you can still start earning college credits right away. Um, students also have the option of studying an umbrella degree. An umbrella degree, they combine related degrees under a broad category. So we have three of those. You can get an umbrella degree or an AA in arts and humanities, social sciences, or an AS in STEM. So for example, Say that you're interested in computers, but you aren't sure if you want to study cybersecurity or coding or networking or information technology. What you could do instead of declaring general studies as your major is declare our STEM AS, our umbrella degree, and you'll get your gen eds out of the way. And then you also will be taking STEM related courses. So courses around those computer type classes, but it will help you figure out what area in STEM you wanna pursue and ultimately declare as your major or transfer to a four-year and declare at that school. On the non-credit side, we have many CEWD short-term training programs that are offered at the Monroe Center. The Monroe Center is right by the Frederick Fairgrounds. Um, and these programs include healthcare careers like CNA or GNA, phlebotomy, dental assisting, vent assistant, medical building and coding, we also have our trade programs, electrical, HVAC, and welding. We have business courses, computers and technology courses like robotics, um, real estate license. Um, there's also child care prep courses, things like that. And then finally, our Hospitality, Culinary, and Tourism Institute is located at the Monroe Center. So anyone interested in hospitality or culinary would take courses there at Monroe. Um, the continuing educations, again, I had mentioned earlier are non-credit, which means they will not transfer to a four-year school. Students who complete these CE programs are looking to enter a career field or an industry right away and don't necessarily need a degree to do um, that particular career. In the chat, we'll make sure that we provide a link to all of our different programs. Definitely check it out on our website. You can look up a curriculum pathway for all programs. So this basically means it will show you a breakdown of each major and it lists out the classes you'll need to take in order to get a degree in that particular major. So it will, it will show you an outline of courses, um, the course sequence, when they're offered, how many credits per semester. Um, it's a really great tool and you'll be using that with your academic advisor when you're picking out your classes and scheduling out your degree plan. I wanted to briefly mention um, and highlight dual enrollment since we do have some underclassmen attending this event. Dual enrollment allows you to earn a high school diploma and college credits at the same time at a fraction of the normal cost. There is a tuition for dual enrollment students. That's um, a big reason why it's appealing for a lot of students. You wanna make sure that you work with your high school counselor throughout the process. They know, um, the application process and the paperwork you need to fill out and also what the course offerings are and they can help you select courses to actually take as well. So a breakdown of the dual enrollment options, there's high school based. So you take FCC classes at your FCPS high school or at CTC and you take these during the normal, normal regular school day and they're taught by FCPS teachers who are trained. Open campus is when you take FCC classes 
at FCC's campus or online. And these courses are during the day or in the evening. It just depends on when you sign up for the class time. There's also career pathways, which refers to students entering, um, exploring career options and earning industry certifications or credentials at FCC in a variety of industries. So some examples of the programs are healthcare careers like CNA or GNA and dental assisting or the HCTI Hospitality Culinary and Tourism Institute programs. Then our newest dual enrollment program is early college. Students can earn an associate's degree from FCC and their high school diploma at the same time. So a student will actually be a full-time student at FCC their junior and senior years. So this is a program that sophomores must apply for and it is competitive. And the application deadline is April 1st and there are limited spots to this. So it's not open to anybody who wants to get in. Um, dual enrollment actually has a really great website. It's here on the slide, frederick.edu backslash DE. They actually hold their own virtual information sessions and virtual open houses. If you are interested in dual enrollment, definitely check out their website and look at their calendar for their upcoming events, and you can get a lot more um, detailed information. Okay, so talking about cost, um, we know that's a big factor for students when deciding where to attend school. So this chart shows um, the annual costs for a full-time in-county student taking 30 credits per year. So again, we figure that number, if you are coming to FCC to complete an associate's degree as a full-time student, you'll take 15 credits each semester usually. So you do 30 credits a year for two years to get 60 credits. So that's kind of how the breakdown works. So the green bar here shows you the cost to attend FCC for one full year as a full-time student. So it's a little over $4,700. Compared to in blue, the cost a little over $10,000 for a four-year public college in Maryland compared to the orange, the four-year private college in Maryland. And those two numbers, the public and private school do not include room and board. So if you're planning on living on campus, you'll probably be adding close to $10,000 onto these numbers as well for the annual cost. Um, so this just shows that our tuition and fees are less than half of what they are at a four-year public college in Maryland. FCC is a smart investment. Our students graduate with no or little college debt while still getting a quality education. And you're gonna hear later on from Shelby from the financial aid office, and she's gonna go over different scholarship opportunities as well. So you can even reduce the number of how much it would cost to attend FCC. All right, so getting into some support services that we offer students, I just wanna highlight a couple different programs so you're aware of them. We have our Office of Adult Services. So this helps smooth the transition for adults returning to school to earn a degree or acquire marketable skills or train for a new career. It helps connect adult students with college and community resources. They hold different workshops and special events. Um, and there's special programs like Parents Lead or Allied Health Academy or Project Forward. And we'll make sure that we link their website in the chat as well. Then we have um, Career and Academic Planning Services or CAPS. This is where the ac academic advising lives. So all students at FCC will have an assigned academic advisor based on what your major is. So whatever you decide to study, you're gonna have that same advisor who oversees those majors and you'll meet with them each semester before you register for classes. So that way you're familiar with the same person, you know who to make an appointment with and go and meet with, and they're familiar with your path and what your goals are. So advising again will help um, you pick out classes and come up with your degree plan. Then they also offer transfer services. So a big question we get is, will my credits transfer to a four year? The simple answer to that is yes. Um, you just want to make sure that you're working with your advisor early on on where you're looking to transfer so that they can take that into consideration and so that you can graduate FCC, but also so those credits transfer with you to your four-year school. Then through their office is also career services, and they can help students explore skills, majors, and careers for those who are undecided. And then for current students, they help with employment opportunities through resume development and interview coaching. 
and they assist with networking to find jobs and internships and bring employers to um, campus and have different career fairs throughout the year. A lot of great opportunities. Then through our learning commons, we offer free tutoring for all students. We have a tutoring and writing center located in the library. It's free drop-in tutoring by professional tutors. And then we also have a specific STEM learning center. So if you need any help in any introductory math or science classes, you can go to the STEM learning center for the drop-in tutoring. We also have an honors college on campus. There is an application to get into honors. So we'll make sure we link the honors page for you in the chat box. With honors to graduate with that, you need to have 12 honors credits or take four honors classes and have a 3.25 GPA from FCC to have that honors um, uh, mark on your transcript. There are scholarships as well offered through the honors college and you'll attend conferences, there'll be networking opportunities, you'll do an independent study project. So being in honors um, helps with your transfer as well, makes you look more marketable on your resume when you're applying to those four-year schools. We also have a behavioral health and wellness office on campus. Um, we have a licensed counselor who can provide short-term counseling, um, provide crisis intervention, different assessments, and also refer you to resources out into the community. We have a disability access services office so they support and assist students with disabilities. They will meet with you and come up with an accommodation plan, which includes services in the classroom, like a note taker, use of a recorder, sign language interpreter, or testing accommodations. So students must self-identify by contacting the DAS office, and they'll set up an intake process with you where you have to submit your disability documentation from a qualified medical professional, and then you'll meet with that DAS counselor to determine your eligibility for services. If you're looking for services from DAS, I would highly recommend you to reach out and meet with them well before your semester starts, just so you have enough time to get the accommodations that you need. FCC also offers a comprehensive program of ESL courses for those who wish to improve their English language skills. And those courses range from basic ESL to targeted to academic, depending on your level. And then finally on this slide, there's multicultural student services, which provides academic planning, mentoring, leadership development. They bring speakers to campus. They've done trips off campus. They also run the PASS program, which stands for Partnership for Achieving Student Success. This is a year long support program for students who have placed into a developmental course or who would just like a little bit more support during their first year of college. There's a summer bridge program attached to this, so you'll actually come to campus in early August and complete a class. So you'll get to meet faculty and staff and other students before the regular fall semester starts at the end of August. There's also a scholarship component to this that you can get through your first year. And then if you remain academically eligible after your freshman year, your first year, you'll get a scholarship going into your sophomore year. And the PASS program is open to all students. So it's a great scholarship opportunity. Then talking a little bit about college life, it is really easy to get involved on campus at FCC. We have clubs and organizations you can join. We have athletic teams, part of the National Junior College Athletic Association. You can attend leadership conferences, which is great for networking and on your resume. There's different service projects. We have alternate spring breaks where you can give back to the community. And then there's also social events on campus as well. Um, just today, they had a huge Halloween celebration. So students um, dressed up and there were prizes awarded. You could paint pumpkins. Um, a lot of cool festivities went on today, which is nice. Okay, so then to conclude things up, I would like to get into the enrollment steps and how to start. So the first thing that you'll do is fill out an application online, frederick.edu backslash apply. It's free to apply. The application is currently open for this current fall semester, for the spring 2022 semester, and also for fall 2022. So if there's any high school seniors here on the event, you can fill out an application for when you graduate high school. One note, dual enrollment students, you must fill out a new application as a new slash former dual enrollment student. Your ID number is going to be the same, but you want to fill out that application to be able to select a major and also to be eligible for financial aid. After you apply, 
definitely start thinking about financial aid and filing the FAFSA and Shelby's gonna get into all of that. So I will be brief on that step. Um, after you apply, we will process your application in the admissions office and then you will get a welcome letter in the mail that has your student ID number and your email address. When you have that, you'll have the next steps of how to reset your passwords so you can log into different FCC accounts. And one of those will be your virtual new student orientation. There'll be different modules for you to go through. Um, it expands on the enrollment steps, different departments on campus, policies and resources, um, all great information for you to complete. So you'll do the new student orientation online. Then if you need to do placement testing, you'll do those. So all students who are pursuing credit courses must complete placement testing in reading, writing, and math. It's just an assessment to determine what level of math and English for you to start at at FCC. It's free to do the placement testing. It's untimed. There are study guides on the website so you can prepare for them as well. However, there are some ways that you don't have to take placement testing if you have some exemptions. So going here to this next slide, here's some examples of common placement testing exemptions. The SAT and the ACT are not required to get into FCC. If you do have them and you meet these scores, you can send them to us to not have to do placement testing. Same with AP classes, if you've taken exams and gotten these scores. Um, MCAP's another example of placement testing. Um, a very common one is if you have a overall unweighted GPA of a 3.0 or higher at your FCPS high school, you're exempt from all placement testing. You don't have to do the reading, writing, or math. So just when you're applying, we encourage students to send us your high school transcript, send us any test scores you have, send us any AP scores. If you have prior college credits from somewhere, send us those as well. Um, so these are the exemptions and they're all listed on our website as well. So after you do the placement testing or send us your exemptions, you're eventually going to meet with your assigned academic advisor. So this is where you'll sit down with your advisor based on what your major is, and they'll ask you what your goals are, and they will help you pick out classes for your first semester and show you how to register for those classes. And then you're able to register for classes on your own after that. And in our, um, you register in PeopleSoft, and in PeopleSoft, after you register, you'll be able to see your financial aid and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then you'll obviously confirm scholarship opportunities. If you need a payment plan, you can visit our student accounts office and they can sign you up for a payment plan for the fall or spring semesters as well. So that's the enrollment steps in a nutshell. And then I just wanted to throw up our contact information for the admissions office. If you have any questions after this event, feel free to email us or give us a call. And also my personal email, jseely at frederick.edu is on here. We're gonna have another virtual information session next month on the 17th, where we're gonna have the Director of Career and Academic Planning Services and also the Director of Career Services attending, talking about advising and career services and you could sign up for that at the admissions website. And then if you always wanna take a campus tour, that's available and open for students. And we will be announcing spring events. We are gonna have some in-person events and virtual events in the spring. And those will be announced on our website um, in the near future as well. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I think next up, we're ready for Shelby. So like I said earlier, you guys are gonna hear now from Shelby Metzger from the Financial Aid Office. So Shelby. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming tonight uh, to learn a little bit more about FCC and I'll hopefully uh, give you some additional information about financial aid. Uh, my goal tonight is to kind of go over some basic information and then I'll be hosting a virtual event on Saturday um, that I encourage you to register for and I'll cover more details about that um, toward the end of this presentation. Um, so first up, the biggest, most important part about financial aid is filing your FAFSA. It's the free application for federal student aid. Um, right now, there are two FAFSA applications available, so very important to make sure that you're completing the correct application. Um, if you're planning to start in fall 2022, you're gonna do the 2022-2023 application. 
um, and you'll use 2020 TAC data for that one. If you are looking at a late start fall class or maybe you're currently enrolled in a fall 2021 class and you are post high school grad, um, it's not too late to do the 2021-2022 FAFSA. Um, and if you need help with those, definitely reach out to our office and we can help you. Um, a very important deadline to be aware of is Maryland's priority deadline, which is March 1st of each year. Um, so financial aid is an annual application that you'll do for the FAFSA. Um, it always opens up October 1st, and then you have until March to meet the priority deadline. If you miss the priority deadline, that is okay. You can still submit the FAFSA, um, but you would not be considered for state financial aid. Um, the, one of the biggest parts about completing the FAFSA is creating your FSA ID, uh, just a fancy way of saying your username and password. Um, it allows you to gain access to U.S. Department of Education websites, which includes the FAFSA application. Um, and I do want to note that I'm, this, this PowerPoint will be shared with everybody that registered, so you'll be able to access these links. Um, I have included the direct link to go to create your ID. I do recommend that you create this prior to starting the FAFSA. Um, parent and student, if you are a dependent student, will both create an FSA ID and password for the FAFSA. Um, you'll be required to use different email addresses and phone numbers when you create the usernames and passwords. So if you don't already have your own personal email address, it'll be a good idea to go ahead and get that created. You do not want to use your FCPS email address because it will be blocked from you completing the registration process. I do recommend that you create the FSA ID and password two to three days prior to starting the FAFSA. Um, and the reason for that is because when you go in to create this, it communicates with several different government agencies. Um, Social Security Administration is one example where they're verifying your name and your Social Security number and your date of birth all match within their database. Um, some students may be able to use their username and password right away. Other students will have to wait that two to three days um, for it to complete the process through all those verification systems. Bear with me one second because it looks like my screen is freezing up. All right, I also wanna to talk to you guys about the Maryland State Financial Aid Application or MISFA for short. The MISFA is available for students who are undocumented only. If you are a citizen or eligible non-citizen, you'll complete the FAFSA. If you are a student who is undocumented, then you'll complete the MISFA. You will not do both applications. So if you're unsure of which application to do, you can use the MISFA eligibility wizard, which is available in the MDCAPS portal. It's simply just the state's portal for awarding financial aid. Um, you can also check in with our staff in the financial aid office and we'll be able to help get you pointed in the right direction. Um, if under some circumstance you accidentally complete the wrong application, that's okay. Just check in with our staff and we can follow up with the state to let them know you accidentally completed the wrong application and they'll honor the original date that you submitted either the FAFSA or the MISFA. Um, and that's important to make sure if you accidentally or you figure out that you've submitted the wrong application after that March 1st deadline. The MISFA is also due 3-1 um, for state aid consideration, so very important to note that deadline. Um, like I mentioned, if you need help completing your FAFSA, we'd be happy to help you. Um, we do have one more event, uh, FAFSA finish event happening at Frederick High School next week. I believe it's on the 3rd of November. You can sign up for that here um, using the link I have provided or the QR code. Um, if you miss a FAFSA finish event, you can also um, email us at financialaid at frederick.edu. And we can set up either an in-person or a Zoom appointment to assist you with your FAFSA application. And we'd be happy to help even if you're not for sure that you're coming to FCC yet. Um, next up, I would like to cover some important FCC Foundation scholarship deadlines. These deadlines do not change from year to year. So if you jot them down now, they'll be the same deadline when you're ready to start at FCC. Um, we'll be starting the spring application on November 1st. Um, and the cool thing about the FCC Foundation Scholarships is even if you're not awarded, if you apply in the fall, you can apply again in the spring. 
Um, so very important that you apply every single semester for these opportunities. There is an online application that you'll complete um, and it's one application you're completing to apply for a whole bunch of different scholarships. If you happen to be awarded a scholarship from the FCC Foundation, just know that you will be asked to complete a thank you letter. Um, and it's very important that you're monitoring your email, your FCC email, because that's how the foundation's gonna reach out to you to let you know if they need a thank you letter from you. And of course we're freezing up a little bit. <laughs> Um, these are some examples of institutional scholarships offered at FCC. Uh, Jen did touch on these a little bit. Uh, the Parents Lead Program, um, just what it's for, parents or students that are parents as well. Um, we have different scholarships for different majors. So a good example of that is the Building Trades Scholarships. Um, STEM Scholars is a, is a great program for students who are Pell eligible and also pursuing a STEM major. Um, it provides additional financial support as well as mentor programs as well. And then there are different scholarships offered by the support offices such as Multicultural Student Services or the Office of Adult Services. In addition to that, if you're an athlete and you're interested in playing your sport for FCC, um, there are athletic scholarships available as well. And you would wanna check in with the athletic office or the coach for the sport that you're interested in, in playing. The Community Foundation of Frederick County is an excellent scholarship opportunity for all Frederick County residents. Um, even if you're a freshman or you're going on to work on a professional degree, such as a master's degree, you can apply for this opportunity every year and it can be awarded even if you're not coming to FCC. So if you're looking at University of Maryland, for example, you can apply for these scholarships and they award over a million dollars per year to Frederick County students. Um, the application has the same time frame every year, March 1st through March 31st. Um, I do recommend that you get started on this application as early as possible. You can always save and return to um, the application at a later date. And it's a super easy website to remember, frederickcountygives.org. Um, you'll wanna make sure your FAFSA is filed before you start this because they do ask you to report some of the data from your FAFSA. Um, I also want to make sure that I cover continuing education and workforce development programs. Um, when I first got started in financial aid, there wasn't many financial aid programs available for CEWD. Um, and now we're seeing a lot of programs, especially those offered by the state. Um, so I did provide the link to CEWD programs here. Um, and then the second link, if you're interested in pursuing a CEWD program, you can fill out this form and then a member of their staff will reach out to you and let you know of some opportunities that may be available. Uh, depending on the program of study that you're interested in pursuing. Um, I did include some examples here. So we have the Maryland Community College Promise Scholarship from the state, as well as the Workforce Development Sequence Scholarship, which is also another state program. Um, and then there's also institutional scholarships um, from the FCC Foundation um, for CEWD programs as well. Um, this is the event that I mentioned at the very beginning um, about Saturday. Um, even if you can't join the live event that starts at 2 p.m., I do recommend that you go ahead and register for the event. Um, I will send the PowerPoint slides, which will include helpful links, and I'll also send a link to access the recorded version of the um, presentation. That way you can go back in and watch if you're not able to come to the live event. Um, I do plan to go into more in-depth information, so I'll cover the FAFSA process. I'll go over the actual financial aid process at FCC because it does vary from school to school. And then a really big thing that I'll talk about will be the Maryland Community College Promise Scholarship. Um, so for those of you that are not aware, the state of Maryland does offer a program for free community college. Um, it is available for students pursuing a whole bunch of different types of programs and it can cover up to $5,000 worth of tuition and fees at the community college level. Um, now, as Jen mentioned, we do have very affordable tuition and fees at FCC. Um, it's right around um, $1,900 for 12 credit hours per semester. Um, so if you're interested in pursuing a credit program, that's definitely enough to pay tuition and fees for both your fall and your spring semester. In addition to that, Maryland Promise is available for um, low to middle income students. Um, so for a student who is either single or lives in a single parent household, the adjusted gross income or AGI limit 
for 2020 is $100,000 or less. And then if you are a married student or you're a student who lives in a two-parent household, that AGI limit bumps up to $150,000 and that is from the 2020 tax year. Um, so very important if you're interested in, in pursuing the Community College uh, Promise Scholarship that you get your FAFSA or your MISFA if you're a student who is undocumented um, submitted before that March 1st deadline. Um, I also wanna make sure that you guys have a way to contact our office. Um, we can be reached via phone, via email. Um, we're also on social media. Most of our posts we do have posted to the main FCC pages. Um, and we do return voicemails and emails within 24 to 48 hours. So definitely reach out to us if you have questions. If we're not available right away, um, a member of our staff will get back to you as soon as possible. And I think I have a little bit of time for questions. Is that okay, Jen? Yep, that's fine. Awesome. So if you guys have questions and you want to unmute yourself to ask, or if you want to drop them in the chat, um, I'm also going to stick around when we have our students speak to you. Um, so you can feel free to message me um, on Zoom or post them to the chat if you think it's a question a lot of students might be interested in knowing the answer to. Quiet group that we have, huh? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Shelby. I think I might just introduce the students. And so if people sure. have questions, they can just throw them in the chat or just chat you directly. Um, we'll do it that Perfect. way. Thank you. Thanks, Shelby. A lot of great information. And again, Saturday at two, um, if you can attend Shelby's event, she'll go into great detail on all of the topics that she covered tonight. So if I could have Joe and Kira come back on and turn your cameras on, we are going to have a student panel here. So I have some questions that I will ask Joe and Kira. If anyone has any questions they would like to ask, again, current students, feel free to put it in the chat and I'll make sure that I keep my eye on it and I can ask your questions for you. So let's start out with um, what has been the biggest difference between high school and FCC or college for the both of you? Um, Kira, do you wanna start? Yeah, um, so what I really like about college is that you're more independent. I would get anxiety from having that really tight schedule in high school. Like I didn't like, that tight schedule but in college you get to pick your classes and make them manageable for you and you going to work it, it works out better um what was the other question it was uh dif difference in high school and in yep. college yeah you covered it what was the biggest difference between high school and college and i i think you hit the nail on the head that you kind of you get to create your own schedule and around your work schedule and other obligations and that's a really good point so Joe, what's your answer to that question? What's the biggest difference that you see from high school to college? I'd say it's kind of similar in like the picking the classes. Um, so the schedules like really um, you make it, but also um, the specialized classes because I'm a music major. So I get to like take classes that I'm really interested in right from the get go and um, that really helps with like me engaging with them, actually doing the work because I love like the topic. Yeah, that's a really great point. And since we're talking about classes, um, to give you an idea at FCC, classes are offered normally on Mondays and Wednesdays together and then Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now there are some exceptions if you have labs or a longer class, you might just have it for one day for three hours instead of an hour and a half for two different days, but there aren't a lot of classes on Fridays, which gives students opportunities to kind of have a catch up day to do some homework and get some stuff done and also, you know, work if they have jobs. Um, so I saw a quick question come in that I can answer asking if honors courses cost more than regular ones. And the answer to that is no, they don't cost more. Um, they are more rigorous classes. So your workload will be a little bit more, a little bit harder than a standard class, but it doesn't cost more for an honors class. They'll just be in your schedule like a regular class would be. Okay, let's ask another question. Why did the two of you choose to attend FCC? So Joe, do you wanna go first on this one? Yeah, sure. Um, I chose FCC because mainly the cost. Um, 
I just knew that that was like the smallest option for me to do. Um, and also because of how close it is, like I live in Thomont, so um, probably up in Emmitsburg is probably the farthest away from like Frederick County will be, unless you're like in Brunswick, that's probably like equal distance, but it's still only like half an hour drive at the most. Um, so it's really like easy for anyone to go in Frederick County. Yeah, definitely. Kira, how about you? Why did you choose to attend FCC? Yeah, I wanted to stay in Frederick as well. I literally live only three minutes away from campus, so it's really close. Um, I, I know friends that graduated from Frederick High School, and I see them around campus, so it's nice to see friendly faces. And I think it's the smartest option to use community colleges to get that step up before transferring. Yeah, those are all great points. Thank you both. Um, and I know Joe actually took a dual enrollment class high school based when he was in high school. So Joe, can you talk a little bit about um, how taking a dual enrollment class helped prepare you for college or how was it similar to a class you're taking now at FCC? Um, anything pertaining to your dual enrollment class? So yeah, I just took English 101 as a senior last fall and that really, um, kind of prepared me just for like what to expect this year. Um, mainly like how to use the Blackboard site and um, like kind of what the workload would expect from like a freshman level class um, at FCC. And I'm really like glad I got that opportunity because it just got it out of the way and I can like get more into specialized classes now. So speaking of workload, since you mentioned that, Joe, can you guys talk about what the workload is like for your classes? So being a first year college student, how how many hours a week do you have homework or are your is your homework mostly or your classwork mostly presentations or papers or kind of what does your work look like? Do they give you a syllabus at the beginning of the semester and then you have all your deadlines or what does it how's it kind of mapped out for you here? Do you want to go first? Yeah, so I'm taking three classes right now and I spend about eight hours a week on my homework. So math class, they give us um, home, one homework assignment after each class, which I'm taking college algebra. And so after I'm done with class, I, I study for about an hour right after and I knock out that homework. Communications, it's pretty much taking notes. Not There's not a whole lot of um, assignments, but there's a lot we have exams and uh, quizzes. And then I have sociology where we have presentations and um, assignments. So I spend about two hours on the weekends getting that done. And then I, um, for the music program, you take like eight classes, but a lot of them are one credit hour. So it's comparable to like six or probably five classes. And I have like between 10 and 12 hours of homework each week. Um, and they like, we get a syllabus for each class, has all the due dates of all the long term projects and stuff. And then all my professors have been like, we might push back the due dates, but we'll never like bring them forward. So you never like um, have anything you don't expect. And then most of my classes, it's just readings and then there's like some just reading comprehension assignments and most of them like some of them will have a paper at the end of the term some just have exams um throughout the term awesome great thanks so since we're talking about classes as well um what are your class sizes like so i told everyone that we have small class sizes so What's the smallest class that you're in and maybe what's the biggest class you're, you're in size wise? And if you don't know the exact number, just guessing you have 10 students, 15 students, 20 students. So what are your class sizes like for your smallest and your biggest class? Yeah, I'll go first. Um, my biggest class is communications. So it's a full class, every seat is taken, but um, there are some people that attend on like through the through the camera, through the meetings. So about like 
a couple people will show up through the virtually and then our class is about 30 people or 25 30 something like that and then my smallest is sociology which is it's a three-hour block on Fridays and that's it's about 15 to 10 people so it's fairly small for me I think my largest class is EO training and there's like 17 people um and the room is set up for 16 but like very frequently people will be absent or stuff. Um, and then my smallest class is class piano. There's like six people in it. Gotcha, great. So definitely on the smaller class sizes still. Um, that's awesome. So let me ask a next, the next question. Um, have either of you guys utilized any support services that are offered on campus? So I had given some examples like the tutoring and writing center, advising. Um, do either of you want to talk about an experience or a service or two that you've used as a student? Yeah, and um, so I get stuck on like my math problems. If I don't understand something, my teacher definitely recommends that we use the ask him questions. But if we need uh, more help than we go to the tutoring. Uh, I forgot which building it's in, but it's... Um, Brodick. Yeah, Brodick. Yeah, so there's some, some really smart people that helped me with my math homework and they really explain it very well when I got stuck. And I always go to the library and study there. I know they got um, people that help write and they can look over your essays. And then um, I haven't taken advantage of the tutoring services yet, but I know I'm definitely, sorry, that's my dog. Um, I'm definitely prepared to, as the semester like kind of wraps up and gets total with like final projects and stuff. And um, I'm ex like, um, we obviously use the advising services like at least once a semester to help choose classes for the next semester and then I'm also excited to like look into the transfer services because it's about time that I should start looking into where to go after FCC so I'm excited to start using that. That's great guys thank you for those examples. Um, I haven't seen any other questions come in the chat for you so let me throw one more question out to you guys to end on. So what advice would you guys give to prospective students who are looking at FCC? So some students who may still be in high school, they're going through the college search process. What advice would you give them when kind of weighing their options and considering where to attend after high school? Um, I'd say decide if you wanna stay local or not. That's one big thing, because I know there is options locally and you can go places farther. But um, some advice what I would give you is like, really manage your time because there are students that can get left behind and they end up like dropping the class. So make sure that in high school that you're really staying consistent with the work. And um, yeah, that's pretty much what I got. That's great advice. How about you, Joe? What advice would you give to a prospective student going through the college process? I would say um, whether you're thinking about going to FCC, knowing you'll go there, or you know you have your heart set on like a different school, the most important thing would be try to get in as many college credits as you can, um, whether that be in high school, like dual enrollment, or taking like AP classes. Um, or then like taking a summer course or like um, any other additional courses you could get would be really helpful because then you could get your gen eds out of the way. And if you know what you wanna do, you can jump right into that. If you don't know what you wanna do, you can have more time to like take one course here that you might be interested, one course there. And like, then you can really get the best experience that you need to find out what you wanna do. Yeah, I just want to add on, um, if I knew about the getting your associates program in high school, I, I would have definitely considered it. I, I kind of, I heard about that. I'm like, kind of like beating myself up. Like, why did I know about that? 
but I think that's a great option to have. And, you know, getting out of high school, having associates is great. Associates and you get your high school. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, early college is a really great program, but don't beat yourself up, Kira, because it is a new program and it's only been around for two years. So I think you would have missed the deadline anyways to have applied for it by the time it was um, available. So don't worry. But um, thank you again to Joe and Kira, our two students, um, for being here tonight, talking a little bit about your experience. I really appreciate it. And thank you to Shelby for being here from Financial Aid, for Jane for running our chat. Um, thank you for Amanda for being here to do our interpreting. We really appreciate you all being here. And thank you to all of you for being here um, to our virtual event. This concludes our session. I hope that you got some valuable information. And if you have any additional questions after this event, just reach out to our offices by the contact information we provided for you. Tomorrow, I'm also going to email all of you um, Shelby's PowerPoint presentation and also um, links and contact information for all the various departments that I went over today in the presentation. I wish you all the best um, wherever you are in high school or beyond. And if we can help in any way, any way, like I said, please just reach out and let us know. Everyone be well and have a great night. Thanks for coming.